Hi guys. I'm sorry, last week I was so low because I didn't want to interrupt anybody and I bet you couldn't even hear me. So this week I'm going to try to talk a little bit louder. Um, and I, I wanted to play on what we, we talked about last week anyway. So how was your week? Was it okay? The, the weather was good, right? And we're hearing a little bit more about the schools and how they're going to open and how they're going to do things. So really, if you know more, then you feel a little bit more comfortable about how you're going to go back to school and, how, and what it's going to be like when you're there and if you're going to have to be at home sometimes also. So I think it might help to get a little bit more information from the school systems and stuff. So let me know if you need me to talk to you or pray for you or whatever. I will, I will do that because I love you guys. Um, last week we talked about not judging someone based on what they look like, right? We, we said that you don't know what's in a person's heart. So this week I found a, um, uh, a story from the Bible from when Jesus, from, from Jesus, and it kind of goes along with that a little bit. So I thought, let's, let's try it. Plus it, it fit right into what we're doing. So Jesus used to teach using stories. Now, when I was a little girl, we had these things called fables. And, and a person called Aesop wrote a lot of them. And fables were stories that taught you something. Like, I don't know if you know, there's a story called The Boy Who Cried Wolf, right? So there was a little boy who was in charge of the sheep and he was supposed to tell the grown-ups when a wolf came because the wolf would eat the sheep. And then he just called it all the time. He would just say, wolf, because he liked seeing people run into to running to him and he would do it over and over and over again and there was no wolf and then one day there was a real wolf and he called it and no one came no one came so there's a, a moral there's a there's a reason why we tell this story and the moral is don't call people don't don't say things that you don't mean because when you need them it won't be there. There's another fable, it's called the tortoise and the hare. The tortoise is a turtle, y'all know that, a big turtle. And they had a race, right? And, um, and the tortoise went really, really slow. And the hare, which is a rabbit, went really, really, really fast. So you would think that the hare would win, but what happened was the hare kept stopping to smell the roses and to check out what was going on. And the tortoise won because he just kept going slow, but he just kept going. So the, the, the moral to that one was slow and steady wins the race. Meaning if you take your time and you do it, you won't get distracted and you can get done what you need to get done. Those are things that are like the stories that Jesus told. The ones that Jesus told are called parables. And the reason people tell these stories is to teach. It's to teach you uh, what you um, need to know, right? And so you need to know that you shouldn't move too quick doing something, that you should take your time and figure it out and go and keep going at a steady pace. You need to know that you can't tell people things that aren't true because then it's going to hurt you in the end. And so Jesus told these stories also. They were called parables. He didn't tell them, tell them just to kids. He told them to everyone because we all learn better through stories that we understand. If you want to explain something to me, if you say it in a real simple way of saying it, then I understand. If you want to say something to Kenny, if you put it in terms of fixing the car, then he's going to understand it. So Jesus did this, right? So one of the parables that he told was um, a parable about weeds and uh, flowers. Wheat, actually. Wheat. And wheat is a plant that grows and then you grind it up and you can make flour out of it. And so um, Jesus told this parable about wheat and weeds. So I'm going to read it to you and um, we're going to see if we can um, figure out what he wanted us to learn from it. Okay, so this is the story about wheat and weeds. It comes from Matthew and it's... Um, two sets of verses, Matthew 13, 24 through 30, and then he explains it in Matthew 13, 36 through 43. 
Then Jesus told them another story. So Jesus was telling them all of these stories to teach them. He had people around them. And he said, the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of heaven is like a man who planted good seed in his field. But that night when everyone was asleep, his enemy came and planted weeds among the wheat. Then the enemy went away. Later, the wheat grew and heads of grain grew on the wheat plants. But at the same time, the weeds also grew. Then the man's servants came to him and said, you planted good seed in your field. Where did the weeds come from? And the man answered, an enemy planted weeds. The servants asked, do you want us to pull up the weeds? And the man answered, no, because when you pull up the weeds, you might also pull up the wheat. Let the weeds and the wheat grow together until the harvest, until we have to pick them to use them. At harvest, I will tell the workers this. First, gather the weeds, the weeds, tie them together to be burned, and then gather the wheat and bring it to my barn. So Jesus finished the story and he went in the house and his followers came to him and they said, explain this to us, we don't understand. Jesus answered, the man who planted the good seed in the field is the son of man, who is what? Jesus. The field is the world, and the good seed are all God's children in the kingdom. The weeds are those who belong to the evil one, and the enemy who planted the bad seed is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, meaning at the end, and the workers who gather are God's angels. So God will decide which are the weeds and which are the angels, right? So here's the thing. People are people, right? We're all people. And we all do good things and we all do bad things, right? Some of us learn and some of us don't learn. But you know who knows all of that? Not me. I don't know who learns and who doesn't learn. I don't know if somebody who's bad or does something bad now is going to, to ask for forgiveness later. I don't know. You know who knows? God. But even God isn't doing anything until the end, until everything is done and he's seen everything. So we don't have to decide who is good and who is bad. Remember last week we said, don't make a decision based on how people look. This week we're kind of saying, you don't have to make the decision. All you have to do is trust that God will make the decision. And you have to do what's right. You have to do what you know God wants you to do. And how do we know that? From the rules, from the Ten Commandments. And the other rule, what's the most important rule? Take care of each other, help each other, treat others like you want to be treated. God, came, Jesus gave us that to us, right? All those other rules basically is the same thing. So here's our job. Our job is to follow the rules, take care of other people, regardless of who they are. So we're going to continue to do what we talked about last week. You see a person, smile at them. If you um, are at the grocery store, let the person behind you go in front of you. If you um, see a child who looks like they um, are a little bit afraid, go over and talk to them or say, come play with me. You could do this. God says it's up to him. And that's true across the board. God's the one who's going to make those decisions. We do not have to do that. All we have to do is know that we're being good. This means that if you see somebody doing something bad, if it's hurting someone else, you can tell somebody who can do something about it. You can go to a teacher or an adult. But if you see somebody that's making decisions that um, maybe you think are not right because they're not what you believe, maybe we can leave that up to God because God's the one who knows. God's the one that's going to do this. That's the whole beauty of God, right? That we don't have to know everything. All we have to know is what we need to do and that God will take care of the rest. So you don't have to worry about other people. You don't have to worry about what they're doing. 
unless somebody's getting hurt. If someone's getting hurt, then you have to stop it by talking to an adult. But other than that, if they're doing something that you think is, is going against God's rules, then you let God figure it out. And you don't need to judge them on that. If you want to talk to them and ask them and be there for them, I think that's great. But I don't think you need to judge somebody that they are um, not, go, not doing God's thing. That's up to God. So here's what we're going to do this week. We're going to make sure that we remember that. That if somebody's not doing what we think is right, then we can still love them. We can still be there for them. If we're getting hurt or someone's getting hurt, you don't have to get hurt. Then you walk away or you tell a grown-up. But if they're just doing something, don't do it. You don't have to do what they're doing. But know that God's going to take care of it. We are not the ones who are going to punish them. We are not the ones who decide whether it's good or bad. And people's rules change. Through the years, things have changed. God's rule never changes. Always, always take care of other people. Do to them what you want done to you. Help them, love them, talk to them, smile at them. Even if you don't know them, even if you're walking down the street, right? Just be careful. Take care of yourself. This is the way we can live our lives. It's not difficult. It's not complicated. It's simple. God will figure it out. I don't have to figure it out. God will figure it out. All I have to do is do the right thing for what I know is the right thing. That's all I have to worry about. But in the meantime, I can be friends with other people, right? I hope you have a great week. And I hope that you remember some of this and maybe take care of those who are having a hard time. And maybe, maybe by being friends with someone and doing the right thing, maybe sometimes that will help that person to be able to do the right thing. Wouldn't that be cool? But you don't have to worry about it. All you have to do is be yourself and God will take care of the rest. So when we read from the Bible, which Miss Kathy's doing, we're learning all kinds of cool stuff. And it's going to help us get through life. It's going to help us get through this pandemic. It's going to help us get through the anger that people are feeling right now. So I think that reading the Bible is a great thing to do. And so if you have a kid's Bible or you have a regular Bible at home, you can look up online anything you're having a hard time with. And you can find verses in the Bible that will help you go through that. So it's just a suggestion. See if you could do it. We still have church on Sunday. It's still clean, and, I, and I'm doing Sunday school lessons here. So if you can, and your mom and dad say it's okay, and you want to come to church, you can. But you got to wear a mask. But if you can't, and mom and dad aren't really ready for that yet, no problem. No problem. Just keep remembering what God taught us, okay? I love you guys. I miss you. But we'll be together soon. Have a great week.